can hear. Yeah, you know, it's just okay. Yeah. Good the mic there. Um, no rift maybe. So um, thank you for everyone. Thank you for um, staying a seat uh, without going to uh, lunch actually. This is gonna be uh, happening in the very midst of the lunch time actually. So you're still hungry or? Did you did you um, have a um, have a good, good uh, breakfast today? Uh, today yeah, I did, I did, I did. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Yeah, same. Just little thing before. Oh, really? <laughs> good to hear that. So uh, this session is uh, we're going to talk about the diversity or um, the startup community, startup community or global startup ecosystem or something like that. So um, we have a great panelist uh, from India and then France. So uh, let me start off this session by asking them to um, make a simple introduction about yourself and then uh, your company. So what do you do, starting with you? Sure. Thank you, Marasa san uh, My name is Panindra Sama. I'm uh, founder, ex-CEO of uh, Redbus.in, uh, which is the uh, largest bus ticketing company. Actually, today it's the largest bus ticketing company in the world. Uh, Redbus is present in eight countries, uh, and uh, the largest is in India. Uh, it started out uh, for personal need. I used to take buses, but there was no way to book bus tickets online. So put together a website to sell bus tickets. And uh, we sold the company about uh, three years ago. And the last three years, I've been traveling the world, learning about different cultures, different uh, startup communities. Uh, uh, so before I start my next company. Mm, so you mentioned that eight company you have present right now. So the which countries? Uh, is it going in Asia or somewhere like that? Uh, Asia and South America. Actually, uh, the expansion happened after we exited. Uh, uh, so uh, Redbus is now present in India, Bangladesh, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Singapore, Peru, and Colombia. Mm. So you sold it, uh, your company to the maybe someone you um, like a big guys maybe right so <coughs> yes yes so we sold it to naspers mm -hmm. uh, which uh, which is a global which oh. is a south african based media conglomerate but uh, owns about 100 uh, internet properties across the world uh, mm -hmm. the most famous is tencent uh, uh, in china uh -huh. uh, they've also invested in mail.ru they're invested in flipkart olx uh, uh, now Red Bus, so uh, they have multiple winning internet brands all across the world. Okay, great. So now you are acting as an probably angel investor or kind of the people who really want to help the enterprise kind of thing rather than uh, doing a kind of business. Yes, yes, certainly. Uh, I think uh, uh, like when we started Red Bus, uh, we were new, just came out of college, didn't know how to set up a company, didn't know how to hire people, they know how to think about branding, marketing, and etc. So we took a lot of help from many people uh, in the society. Uh, went to the best brand guy to get uh, ideas on how to brand, and they all offered their help free of cost. Uh, now, uh, this is a way for me to give back to the society, so I do uh, help entrepreneurs, I do invest mm. uh, in companies, but it's not like a full-time professional investor. It is more out of an obligation to contribute back to the society, okay. uh, to the fellow entrepreneurs. Great, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm very looking forward to hearing from you. Insights about your uh, market, actually. So, sure. so next time, um, JD, your time. So, what do you do? Uh, what's your, uh, what are you doing? Uh, what's your job? Um, kind of, yeah, let me ask you. Yeah, thanks, Masaru, for the introduction. So, my name is uh, <coughs> Jean-Dominique Francois. Uh, I'm currently coordinating the effort of the French tech here in Japan. Uh, and we launched a French tech hub here in Tokyo in the end of uh, 2015. Um, actually, currently, so I'm working for the French government uh, to help promote the exchanges between France and Japan for startup ecosystem. But I used to be an entrepreneur because I, I worked for startups for more than 15 years. Uh, starting in the mid-90s, um, and so I co-founded a company, uh, developed it uh, worldwide, including in Japan. So I know Japan for about 20 years, uh, and spent here almost eight years. Uh, so both for business, for startups, and currently for helping bridge the ecosystems. Mm. So um, you mostly spend your time here in Tokyo rather than uh, spend your time in Paris or somewhere like in France? Actually, um, yeah, currently I'm spending most of my time in Tokyo. I'm based here. Uh -huh. uh, but 
before that, I used to travel a lot between Europe uh, and, and Japan. Back and forth, maybe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. So, so compared to the time when you started working for um, um, La French Tech, actually, um, so how how is changing actually? So do you do you see any change in the startup community here in Japan or in France? What yes, yes, of course. That's uh, that's the reason why we wanted to have a hub uh -huh. in, in Japan because uh, the landscape here is definitely changing. There are still a lot of challenges for sure, but uh, yeah, it's really changing. Okay. So in the 90s, uh, I would say so the big uh, internet companies you have in Japan. Uh, so you had startups like this in Japan and same in France, okay? Um, but uh, after, the, in the 2000, from 2005, it was less uh, easy for people to start businesses. Mm. And, uh, and more recently, a lot of initiatives started in Japan uh, for startups and more and more international. And of course, uh, Slush is a, is a very good example. Yep. Uh, to mix up uh, a lot of ecosystems. And at the same time, in France, of course, we have a long history of uh, startups and ecosystems, mm. but not many people knew it outside mm. of France. Okay? Mm. France is famous for full culture, but it's also famous for innovation. So, so, but we had to let people know, and that's the reason why we started the French Tech Initiative. Uh, and then, more recently, Hubs worldwide uh -huh. uh, in the States, in UK, in, in Japan, etc. Okay. okay. So let me ask you the uh, funny. So um, I think the, uh, the many changes happening out there in, in your home country, right? So um, uh, from the uh, media side, is media, media, is, uh, media guys' uh, um, perspective, actually, what's happening there is uh, like, um, I don't know, um, Japanese, many Japanese investors are getting interested in uh, investing in the Indian style right now. They used to be, uh, Southeast Asia is uh, probably, that region has a great potential in terms of many, many meaning actually, but now many of them are going to the, uh, India to, to start massively investing in Indian startups. So, so what do you think? What, 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 how the things about that? Yeah. Yeah, uh, off late, a lot of Japanese uh, uh, funds have set up base in India, uh, about 15 funds, Incubate Fund, MNS Partners, uh, uh, Rebright, BNext, SoftBank, uh, like so many companies coming on uh, uh, investing in India. I think, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, my thinking is that uh, Japan saw China grow massively in the last 15, 20 years, mm. right? And like Rajesh uh, this morning presented, India is the last big market for internet. Uh, uh, the new other markets are small. India is the last big market, and Japan just saw China go up, and I think they're. Uh, just seeing that happen in the last 15 years, nobody can resist the temptation to go to the next big thing that is happening in the world. And I think that's what is pulling a lot of Japanese companies there. I, I, I think it's a great thing uh, for India as well as Japan. Mm. So and are there many uh, startups who might be interested in expanding to the Japanese market? Or? Yes, uh, many, many uh, companies. I'm told uh, many companies are coming to, I mean, uh, plan to come here, but mm. uh, it's been a little difficult. Mm. Uh, I'm told one of the largest SaaS company in India was trying to come here, but uh, things didn't go, uh, uh, I mean, didn't go as planned. I think these are the initial, uh, initial uh, struggles, but in the long run, I think uh, there's a very good combination of uh, Indian software and Japanese hardware. Uh, mm. uh, kind of a combination, uh, okay. which can be very successful. Uh, good to know that. Yeah. So Japanese, yeah. Uh, Japanese capital and Indian entrepreneurs is also a very good combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Compared to the other relationship between the U.S. and India, or the other those kind of things, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, Japan is characteristically strong in. Uh, the hardware, uh -huh. uh, the sensors, and etc. And we are characteristically very strong in software. I mm. think uh, that will be a great combination, uh, which will be a good uh, complementary skills mm -hmm. to make a product. Actually, I've heard that the, the, the institutions like Indian Institute of Technology, which is called uh, IIT, for sh ITT? IIT. Uh, IIT for sure, yeah. maybe, right? So they, th th that's going to be kind of the driving engine for creating a great uh, talent for startup community in India. What do you think? Um, yeah, any yeah. Insight uh, absolutely. On that? I mean, IIT is a great uh, 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 government-funded university in India, uh, engineering university. And uh, they are present in multiple locations. And mm. the brightest of the people, it's highly competitive to get into IIT. 
and uh, uh, the, the students there are very bright, and uh, they're coming out and setting up their, uh, mm. their companies, yeah. So you have also the invested in some Indian startups. So when you look at the, uh, who are the uh, co-founders or founders of them, many of them are graduated from the IIT or those kind of things, right? Yeah, actually, actually that's true. Yeah, uh. Many of them are from IIT, many of them are from BITS, uh, that's my college. Uh, uh, which is also very good uh, for mm. engineering, yeah. Mm. Okay, good, good. So, JD, um, so, yeah, actually, you told me that many things are happening, many changes are happening right now. So, so would you like to elaborate the recent situation, or latest trends in the French startup ecosystem right now? Yeah, okay, so the, <coughs> the, the long case changed a little bit recently because uh, we started this initiative around French tech uh, so that abroad people can better understand, okay? And uh, so one of the results is clearly that a, a lot of money poured into the French market. And so two, back two years, three years ago, uh, we had roughly one billion um, euro of, uh, for VCs, mm -hmm. and now it's more than the double, okay? Mm. Uh, and the number of deals also is uh, more than double too, so about 50. 500 deals mm. uh, in 2016. Mm. So, uh, but what is important to understand is that uh, it's not something that just started three years ago, okay? We made more uh, communication about this. What, what they makes happen? What, 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 what the, uh, what's the reason why the, um, um, the, the people started off their doing business so massively? What do you think? Okay, there are several things. First, uh, there is uh, long tradition of innovation in France uh -huh. with uh, research institutes. Uh, if you see in the rankings every year, uh, you have French uh, institutes in the top five. Mm -hmm. uh, engineering schools, technical schools, university, coding schools also, which are most one of the most famous uh, uh, skills uh, people have in France. And um, and so, of course, uh, we had uh, entrepreneurs in the 90s, in the 80s, so like uh, uh, Jean-Baptiste Rudel for um, uh, Criteo. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of young people said, okay, why not me also, okay? So they usually have strong uh, technical background. Uh, they are helped by uh, uh, former entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of successful entrepreneurs turn to be uh, business angels, so they support also mm. all these people. And we also developed a lot of incubation places all over France, not only in Paris, all over France. So which means that uh, there is a complete ecosystem mm. for uh, uh, some time ago. Um, so, so yeah, th that's the result of all, all these actions that mm. at the end of the day, the guys say, yes, I want to do it. Okay. So you probably yeah. have some slides to show to the audience maybe, right? Yeah. Thank yeah, you. actually, yeah, this is uh, w now why, why we are more famous worldwide, <laughs> thanks to the CES in Las Vegas. Uh -huh. And so, so typically in Eureka Park this year, uh, you can see all the uh, red blocks are the French startups there, okay? So uh -huh. more than 200. Yeah, I've read many stories about, yeah, the French startup were great at the uh, CES, Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, they were outstanding, rather than the US-based startups or other yeah, areas? Yeah, yeah, maybe. that's true. So actually, this was, <laughs> this was the third, third consecutive year. Uh -huh. uh, and you can find also a lot of in Mobile World Congress, in South by Southwest, mm. so in Slush also in Finland. Uh, and so very recently, Yatto, I would say, in Japanese. So now the Japanese start to, to speak about this. So mm -hmm. it's a Nikkei or Toyo Shimbun. They said, see, there is something going on in France. Uh, what is difficult for people to understand is uh, France is a large country, mm -hmm. and historically we have different prices for different technologies. So if you tell about uh, microelectronics, for instance, it's more in the southeast with Grenoble. Uh, in telecommunication, it's more in the west. Uh, of course, there are a lot of things in Paris. For aeronautics, IoT, it's more in Toulouse. It's the mm. uh, home base of Airbus Group. Okay, so it's complex. So that's the reason why we created French Tech several cities, which are the best one uh, in different industries. And we made categories, eight categories, to help people better understand. So for mm. food tech, you know that in these cities, you have the right skills. For uh, security in these cities, for fintech, etc., etc. Mm. 
Interesting. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, just to give a few examples. Uh, so a lot of people are talking about artificial intelligence. That's interesting because what we say in France is that the, the strength is really on the technical skills, so mathematics, algorithms. And in AI, of course, in all industries, you will have this, and you will need strong background in math and algorithm. And here you have about 100 French startups just for AI. And this is this slide you can find on the internet, as I mentioned before, it's the, it's the ecosystem. Uh, it's not only the startups, not only the VCs, but the technical schools, uh, the support, the public support also, mm. okay? Uh, from the government, from the cities, uh, of course the VCs, the large corporation, uh, and the places. So this, this is a comprehensive uh, diagram which gives you a lot of, uh, of the Very stakeholders. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is the end, is it? This yeah. is the fine, fine phrase maybe. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, that's a few news we had for specifically for Japan. I, I already uh, commented this figure from uh -huh. Financial Times actually. Uh, last year we had the news with Sixbox, which is quite famous now in Japan. Uh, Hardware Club also received some money, so mm. Hardware Club is very famous here in Japan, but uh, they received money from Missile2. Uh -huh. uh, Line also, in Korea, not in Japan, but Line pulled money in France for a European fund. Uh, so these are some examples that now, even in Japan, mm. um, people start to think about uh, okay. France. And just a few words about the, the hubs. So we have currently 22 hubs worldwide. Okay, so the purpose of these hubs. Yeah, wherever you go, actually, and uh, especially to the startup conferences out there, actually, we've seen a bunch of the the logo, French tech logo, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a crane, right? Crane, crane, uh, folding, pa folding paper crane, or kind of thing. Because we're in Japan. Yeah. So the the. Ah. It's only for it's Japanese. Tsu the Tsuru, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, this got it. <laughs> French tech Tokyo. So every. Uh, Hub has its own image. I see. Okay. I see. But what is important is, in these hubs, we gather uh, a community of institutional people, embassy, business France, French Chamber of Commerce, mm. large corporation like Orange Group, Orange Fab is operating an, uh, a program here in Japan, or Dassault System also. Uh -huh. Local Japanese player like uh, DMM Group, DMM Make, Makers Bootcamp, Osaka Innovation Hub. And all the French or French related people in the tech industry. So we have French entrepreneur based in Japan. Uh, there is one here today uh, with Ikai, for instance, uh, or Lokai, many others. Okay. French startup developing business in Japan. You can find here also Magenti, working very well, mm. Triteo. Um, and, uh, and so we, the purpose of the hub is to accelerate the exchanges, okay. put you directly in contact. So the so Japanese to understand Europe, for the Japanese to connect directly with France to understand Europe, and vice versa. I think the uh, many, yeah, actually, let me ask you something about the trend, the um, latest trend uh, in both of your countries, actually. Um, um, so many typical entrepreneurs used to, um, I don't know how to say, they, they, tend, they tend to the follow the way of the Silicon Valley, maybe, right? They, uh, m many entrepreneurs want to um, go to Silicon Valley and uh, follow the way of them, and then, um, and then make a great success out there, maybe. So Indian people also they're going there to, um, to how they say, to do their business. But, but actually, what, what's ha what is happening right now is they are coming back to their home turf, right? And then to launch their business in their home, their home country. What, what, what was changing that? Why is that? What do you think? Yeah, I think some of the trends that Rajesh spoke this morning, uh, internet penetration is increasing in India, uh -huh. uh, payments has become simpler, uh, 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 mobile phone penetration is increasing, so that's opening up a large market. So people, and, and India is home to about seven unicorns, uh -huh. and like Rajesh pred predicted, very soon we'll have about 50 yeah. unicorns. So nobody can tempt, uh, resist the temptation to be playing in that market. Mm. So I think that is one of the reasons why the NRIs are getting attracted to come Long back to India. Indians, right? Yeah, yeah. NRI. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, well, what about France? Um, okay, so um, <coughs> the Silicon Valley is important and will remain important. That's uh -huh. a fact. It's a very beautiful place to meet people. It's mm -hmm. a very beautiful ecosystem. Uh, so that's a fact, and I don't expect it to change mm. uh, in the near future. However, 
uh, there are many more other ecosystems, uh -huh. depending on what you want to do, which country you want to target, which kind of skills you want to find, uh -huh. which kind of business you are involved in. Okay? And, and here, I think, uh, yeah, there are many more ecosystems. So I think currently, uh, the question is more uh, how to connect all these ecosystems and have a, yeah, it's a good, uh, uh, smooth uh, transition mm -hmm. and to take the benefit from, from this. And here, to come back, so I in uh, the Silicon Valley, we have uh, about 30,000 French people living mm. there. Uh, a lot of them started companies there, are VCs there also. Uh, that's fine, they keep relationship with France, mm -hmm. and of course they can help the French people starting business in, in oh. France to, to, to move there. But same, we have the French people in Japan, in India, in, uh, in Vietnam, in uh, Singapore, mm -hmm. everywhere in the world, we, we can help them connect. Uh, because, of course, it's a great place for innovation in the Silicon Valley, but there are other places, and uh, you have to, 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 to build your own local networks. Oh, okay. So, one more question. Um, um, you know, the, I'm not sure how many of the our audiences and how many British people are coming from the U um, how many people are coming from the UK accounting. But actually, there was a big incident, which is a Brexit, <laughs> and then uh, so the meaning the UK is uh, or will be no longer a part of the European community, maybe. So yeah, actually, a few years ago or a one year ago kind of things actually. Um, if they, uh, I mean, the, if you set up your office, European office in London or somewhere like that, that's going to be working as a, a headquarter for the region, entire region maybe. But London or kind of UK will be no longer a kind of the European community in terms of that. So what, what, what the, it, the, is um, okay, the so kind of thing will any, uh, give any impact to the uh, um, French startup ecosystem or is it good for you or is it bad for you? What do you think? Okay, so just to come back on my own experience, okay? Uh, when, so it, it was in the mid-90s, so it changed, uh -huh. but there are some things still in place. Uh, to raise up to 10, 15 million euros, uh -huh. it was possible to do it in France. To raise between 15 to 50 million euros, you had to go to London. To raise more than 50 million, you have to go to the States. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm not sure it changed a lot. It changed because now you can raise several uh, tens of millions of euros in France. Uh, but anyway, it was a landscape uh, 15 years ago. So now there will be the Brexit. Fine. Mm. Uh, first, it's it's a process. There there will be things changing for sure. But again, uh, uh, I, I we have 300,000. French people living in London. Uh -huh. okay? uh, we have a hub, French Tech Hub in London. We uh -huh. have here one girl from the hub there for mm. uh, also presenting a French media called uh, uh -huh. French Web. Um, and and I would say again, the, the, the for the startup co community, there are international people. Uh, they travel a lot. They develop connections, and they know that when it's question of business, you have to do it locally. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so I, I would say it, it's difficult to, f to tell you what will happen exactly. Uh -huh. However, uh, if you want to make business in the UK, UK is a great country. Uh -huh. If you want to make business in France, Southern Europe, Africa, I think France is a great country. For the German market, Germany is a great country too. Mm. So you have to, uh, I don't see this changing a lot in okay. the coming year. Okay. Year. So let me ask Stefani um, um, a similar question to you with uh, some political flavor, maybe. Um, so, um, yeah, Indian people, I mean, basically the techno technology entrepreneurs are working out uh, in a Silicon Valley as an immigrant, maybe. But uh, the, the Trump, the President Trump, uh, made a, how do you say, it's an, uh, he's doing a lot of things like um, to, 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 how do you say, the, uh, um, regulate the uh, uh, immigrants and all kind of things. Actually, what do you think? Uh, is it good for your uh, company, a uh, country, or uh, community? Or what do you think? 
Yeah, I think we have to see how that will play out. But uh, uh, I mean, right now, uh -huh. I don't think there's an, any, any impact. Uh, in the long run, I think if the talented people come back to India, it's a great thing to happen to India. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I, I think in India, we don't have as strong an education system as it is in the US. Mm -hmm. So it's very good if uh, uh, the Indian students can go abroad, study, and then come back and serve their country. Uh -huh. So I think it's a blessing in disguise uh, if it happens the way it uh, everybody anticipates. Uh, even if it doesn't happen, it's good. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the business is as usual. Mm. So I'm neutral on that. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we are almost one year out of the time. So we need to wrap up this session with. Uh, you, you want to say something? Yeah, maybe a, a few words about. Uh, so how we work with. I, I don't have time. So we organize a lot of different events mm -hmm. and push uh, uh, speakers or startups to big events. So last year at Thrush, actually, we had a. French startup called Zeroptic uh -huh. that won a, a second prize, I think. But anyway, as I mentioned, we work with uh, our local partners here. Um, and uh, just to conclude, uh, yeah, there is one big news in France. It's uh, Viva Technology, uh, which started last year with a totally new concept. It's uh, around large corporations and startups and the ecosystem. So this year, it will be uh, 15th to 17th of June. In Paris. This, this is going to be um, they're hosted by the government, right? Isn't it? No, no, no. It's a totally private uh, oh, really? event. It's oh. a, a media com group called Publicis uh -huh. and Les Echo. And uh, it works around large corporations. And this, oh. I think, it's very interesting because for co coming years, uh, the, r the relationship between large corporations and startups is key, and especially in Japan. Mm. And it's the same in France. And so, anyway, this is uh, we gather there. Five almost 5,000 startups uh, with uh, 20 large corporations working mm. together. So you are very welcome to participate in this. And the last thing is about uh, another event, older, this one, uh, which is for deep tech and uh, scientists. Uh, in France, we have, as I mentioned, uh, a strong background for research, same in Japan also. And so we, we try to help these guys uh, meet with entrepreneurs. Okay. And this is another date in October in Paris. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. So, so funny. So, so give us the last few words for Japanese entrepreneurs or Japanese startup who, sure. yeah. So the last thing that I want to say is uh, uh, the Google Lunar X challenge, uh, uh, which was launched in 2007, about 30 teams in the world participated to send a robotic arm to the moon. Uh, uh, and this has to be a startup team. So today, there are five finalists. Out of the five finalists, two are, one is from the US, one is from Israel. The third one is an international team. And the other two which are left out are India and Japan. So I think India and Japan are the only two countries <laughs> in the 200 odd countries, if you leave Israel and uh, US aside, mm -hmm. uh, who are the finalists in that. So that also is a reason to celebrate our, I mean, uh, uh, our togetherness and uh, I think great things to uh, that uh, that shows that great things are uh, coming that. our way. Thank yeah. you, good to Thank hear you. that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So this concludes this session. So please uh, give a round of applause to our awesome panelists. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.